What's up everybody, Michael here, breaking away. Look at that move on the S&P 500 today. You're watching the Stock Market Brief Show. We're gonna talk about some bullish things taking place, some bearish things taking place, and overall just some things to consider in this very risky environment. We're gonna hop right into it. Yes, I call this the breakaway, right? Why is that? Well, if we take a look at types of gaps in the market, there are common gaps, AKA also known as trading gaps, breakaway gaps, that's what we're talking about right now. Continuation gaps, running away, right? Or exhaustion gaps. Now, I wanna point out a couple of things. A breakaway gap is this highlighted right here, number two, where it's coming into a previous area of resistance and it typically breaks away, leaving an open gap where we start running further up to the upside. An exhaustion gap looks very similar. However, in days to follow, the gap then is closed and we start closing off. Now we've made a big run in the S&P 500, so we gotta be mindful that if we start closing in on this gap and closing below it, it could signal that that was an exhaustion gap where we need to take some time to consolidate. But as of right now, it's innocent until proven guilty. You can see here we broke out of this consolidation, leaving a big gap be uh, under us. And we'll map out some key levels today on this episode. Now. One other thing that I wanna preface this all by is FOMO. I wanna point out what the chart looked like here in 2008. Now I get a lot of schmack from people. Why do you compare it to 2008? It's a different macro environment. But really I'm actually, I can compare it to any environment at any time frame on any equity and show you what FOMO looks like. This is my example because it matches very similarly. This is a quarterly chart, okay? We had a quarter, in 2008, we had a close below the 5 EMA. For those that have been sticking around, there's an important reason why I show the quarterly 5 EMA and when we have a quarterly candle close beneath it. Because typically, if we get two in a row, it's not good. Now this, like I said, is 2008. This is what the candle looked like. It looked like this, but it didn't finish like this. So imagine the FOMO and excitement that we saw from this peak to this low, coming back up, getting above the quarterly 5 EMA right up to this point. What do you think people were saying? Well, I can tell you what people were saying right here. Stocks ready to rally now that the worst is over. All right, that was right there in August 2008. It was published August 11th before big selling. So there was massive FOMO. How did the candle close out? The candle looked like this on the closing quarter. Okay, not to say that this is going to happen, but this is very, very important to pay attention to. Yes, we have still high CPI, right? We got a high CPI reading is 8.5. It was below consumer expert er, by consensus, all right? But in March, it was 8.5. We felt like this. And then in August of 8.5, well, we're feeling like this, all right? But inflation is still hot. The Fed will still have to raise rates currently, right? So we're coming down 9.1 down to 8.5, but still, like we said on yesterday's video, it's floating above the eight um, to nine region right now, which, you know, it's, I mean, it's high, that is still high, and now it can come off, it can come down, but now we're gonna start having to focus on other things. Inflation, right, it, 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 was, it was a big piece. Now, if it starts coming down, we're gonna start talking more about rate hikes and possession, uh, uh, potentially more recessionary risks that build. Okay, now, also to note how this quarter ended, right? We had a quarterly close, and then we saw a big bullish candle that closed like this. Well, what do we look like right now? Well, right now we have, you know, a big scary red candle, right? From this peak to this trough. And now we're coming back up to that quarterly 5 EMA, getting above it. So what do you see out there in the marketplace? You're seeing a lot of bullish behavior, all right? It's it's a lot of FOMO chasing this up. So we'll talk about how can we play this breakaway gap and still remain focused on capital preservation and risk, okay? Um, now, right now, as it stands, there's a couple lines on the screen. These dashed lines are actually the quarterly expected moves that we pulled at the start of the quarter, at the end of the last one, and we're coming just right above that, okay? And as we come up to there, look where it's gonna tag. It's gonna tag the low of this quarter and pretty much the low of that quarter and about the high of that quarter. So this 40, you know, it's just above 40, just below 4,300 is going to be a very important level. So if you are bullish, you want this quarterly candle to close above the quarterly 5 EMA. That would be significantly more positive um, than closing beneath it again. As you can see, the PMO is running out of steam and this has been a bearish crossover. So we'll see how the quarter finishes. We still got time, but you can see here, you know, we also very similarly in 08, we we're having that quarterly crossover, okay? 
All right. So, and by the way, it wasn't just this that came out, right? Stocks ready to rally. There's all kinds of articles. It says best trades now, healthcare, tech, and more, right? And that was August 8th of 2000, um, August 11th of 2008 too. So yes, yes, you've got to be very aware of the FOMO. Don't get sucked in off of one single trading day. So let's first look at what took place after we got that CPI report that came in under expectations. The dollar dropped, go figure, right? And the S&P 500 started to rally. It is still within a flagging formation and it's still above that 105, which is a key level of support to keep an eye on. And it's right there sitting at that lower Bollinger Band. But that's not it. Also, if you take a look at the weekly expected move for UUP, it did tag beneath it and now we close at the 50 day right there under so is this a part where hey you know this is actually a potential opportunity to go long dollar where we might start seeing a move up here momentarily um i mean if you want to take a stab at it it isn't a bullish trend maybe wait for it to cross above back above that 50 day and see if the trend continues right there's that's a possibility but as we know we got a pretty decent size breakdown right on some big volume and the MACD is still pointing down and the relative strength lines coming off a little bit here too so some bearish things taking place but you know it's it can it can easily wake up here right back to the 20 day and we can change our narrative there what happened to the markets overall well the 11 sectors were up materials consumer discretionary communication service technology led the way with some big big gains up here and then you can see the VIX was absolutely crushed to the downside closing for the first time under 20 for quite some time and we'll talk a little bit more about that one later what happened to yields not much not much at all we're still negative 45 basis points on the 10 and 2 and we're 13 basis points for the the 10 year and three month okay so yeah still in dangerous territory if you take a look at the 10-year yield it was pretty significantly down on the day but it started bidding back up so it finished slightly down minus three nine so if this starts catching a move to the upside um watch out for tech to get hit um that is a strong possibility as we outlined in yesterday's video um if that starts going up um, at a rapid rate of change bonds could potentially take a little bit of a back seat but as you can see bonds actually went down too today it's still within this in uh inverse head and shoulder pattern like i said it's kind of hard to gauge the bonds right now but if we start breaking above these these levels it could um potentially help you know more momentum type buyers breakout traders enter into that type of a trade where we can see that potentially um start moving up now let's take a look at the expected moves is anything out of the ordinary taking place this week no there's not and we would know because well the expected moves have priced this in already and yes we saw Pretty much nothing take place for a little while. And then we just got the big gap up today. Could be that breakaway gap, which we'll talk about how we can potentially play that. But we have that weekly upper expected move just above us. And we haven't even tagged it yet. We're not far off, right? A couple of days off or a couple of days left in the trading week. I mean, I would imagine we can touch it. If we can't, that'd be pretty sad. We know what is interesting about, you know, this, you know, ramp up right here, then this consolidation breakdown up here. All right. It looks very similar to like this one right over here, right? Where we came up, rallied, rallied. Okay, consolidated, fell down, consolidated, fell down, doodle around, doodle around, ramped up, ramped up. And then we created this little tiny hanging man candle before we started breaking back down. Hanging man candle before what? We're going to start breaking back down? I don't know. It's always open for interpretation at this point. Right now, breakaway gap. How do we play that? Okay. Just very similar to the first second slide that I showed you. If you want to play a breakaway gap, you can play the breakout of these levels and then you can have a stop below all of that, you know, this volatility box right here or this uh, kind of bullish consolidation. And if that's the case and you start entering in and it takes off, cool, you just cut yourself a great trade, all right? But if it comes back down and it stops you out, big deal, right? Because you're managing your risk. If you really think that this is the bottom for the year, bottom forever, whatever the case may be, you know, you can play this breakout uh, because it is technically a bullish breakout of a bullish consolidation um, as it stands at this current moment. OK, so let's continue on. Look at the cues. Cues, very similar type situation. Nice breakaway. But what I found interesting here was it didn't even crack the prior high two days ago. So we'll see here, you know, if it has the gas to go and tag that upper weekly expected move. I would imagine we can get a little bit more momentum into that. But um, it's anybody's guess at this point. Now, keep in mind, we are below the 200 day moving average still at this point on the cues and we are still below it on the spy as well although i don't have it highlighted on the chart iwm on the other hand did hit the weekly expected move it actually tagged it 
pretty much to a T coming outside of it and then um, selling back off to close within the expected move. Um, we have not tested that 200 day moving average. It looks like we can potentially test it at some point. RSI is getting a little fried right there as the market's been moving up. We also have the MACD kind of uh, giving us a little bit of a bearish divergence here. So continue to watch to see how it develops. I will I will note that the IWM, the implied volatility, actually I'll get into the implied volatility here momentarily. Let's take a look at the SPY, the predicted range based off of its ATR, average true range tomorrow, gives us a higher high and a higher low. It's that gray shaded box. And where does that bring us? If we come up into that area, well, it brings us to the year-to-date anchored VWAP. So at this particular point in time, we're still below the year-to-date anchored VWAP, but we do have a breakaway gap. So it'd be nice to see this taken out, maybe even consolidate, then take it out if you want to be more bullish. But as it stands right now, we have some headwinds just overhead overway over i don't know what i'm trying to say here's the cues the cues also the predicted range is bringing us to just above the year to date anchored vwap and then a um just just above the prior low of today so higher high higher low is what it's predicting um based off of average to range we will see here we have that year to date anchor vwap also just overhead so we have that overhead and we have the weekly expected move overhead. Okay, so be aware of that. If you want to play this breakout right, you might not get the traction that you want right out of the gate. Um, so be just be aware of those levels, okay? Let's move on to the IWM. The IWM did hit its upper weekly expected move and it got above its yearly um, anchored VWAP, which is nice. And it is predicting a higher, high, higher low going into tomorrow. That's based off of the close and based off of an average true range of 60 days. So, um, uh, I'm not gonna get too much into that one, actually that calculation. Um, and now if you want, uh, I found this interesting too. So as we're coming up into the higher areas of these bands, we're at a 2% right percentile. So how do we, you know, how do we think of this? So IV implied volatility is at 20, IV rank is at five. And then basically what this is saying is five days out of 252 trading days, so one year, um, has it traded, you know, at this range, right? So 2% of the days or five days out of the 252 were below the current IV, which is 20. So the IV percentile is very low. How do you think of this, right? So low, right? We'll call it zero to 100 on based on a scale of IV percentile, right? It can go to 100%, it can go to 0%. 50% is the midline. So when you come down to around zero, this is contracting and then you have expanding, right? And then here's the safety zone, right? 50% of the time. So as it stands right now, when I look at, you know, we're at a 0% uh, IV percentile based on a half a year, we're at a 2% based off of you know, a year of trading, 252 trading days. To me, this is looking a little sketchy because in, like I stated, actually, I think a couple of days ago, um, this being so low, right, it's contracting. Contracting leads to expansion. And that means that IV percentile can start picking up here in the very near future, which means expect to see more volatility. Uh, could be potentially a lot more volatility to come. And remember, volatility is plus or minus. So this is not directional bias at this particular point in time. As I look at this chart, as we're above the anchored VWAP, we have a breakaway gap. It can easily press higher. But as we're going into the top of um, these bands, it, you know, it could very well present itself as some overhead supply too as well. Okay. Especially given that we have a discount here on IV. Okay, so let's continue on. Those are some notes there from both bullish and bearish direction. If we take a look at the SPY on the 65 minute time frame, still a negative divergence. Notice the price action today. Cash market didn't do much, right? It was the futures market. It was the overnight session here. Or, you know, once the report dropped, basically, we had that huge gap up, which made up for the majority of the move. If we would have opened up, you know, even and just did the same day, you know, nobody would be talking about it. It'd be pointless. But we had that big gap. Could be that breakaway gap. We're above the five-day moving average. It is back to inclining, right? We closed below it yesterday, and then we just gap right through it. Go figure, right? We didn't even try to test it in the cash market because that could probably hold as a level of resistance. So as it stands right now, broadening wedge potential pattern right here. Um, and broadening wedges, you can see they get tight, right? But then they start getting a little sloppy. And sometimes the sloppiness can tighten back up. And then people say, hey, it's a diamond pattern, right? And then you have to wait for a breakout to the upside or downside. Because when you have times of high volatility, it's very hard to gauge a good risk to reward trade. So that's what we're looking at right now for the SPY. If you take a look at the Qs, same situation, right? Megaphone pattern, right? Price action was tightening up a little bit, but then it started getting looser. And now you can see it's kind of all over the place. So what you need to see is this tighten up. Now, the 
top of the range or top of weekly expected move is just above 330. Looks like it's in striking distance. That's in confluence with this upper trend line here too. So keep an eye out for that. And then also, right, we gapped right through that five day moving average. So if we start getting back below it, start looking at the lower area too. I don't know if that's gonna touch, you know, this week or not, but you got to be open to the idea of that potentially happening because there's still a lot of room for volatility to, you know, poke its, poke its nose out here. If we take a look at the Qs, or sorry, the IWM, the IWM, you can see here tagged just above it and then started selling off there, but we closed just about at the weekly expected move. And you can see here, we closed on the five day moving average yesterday, which I thought was kind of funny. And then we, and we also stated that this was one of the more stronger ones. Well, guess what? It was up 2.86% today, gapped and ripped. So it was a gap, gap and ramp right into that weekly expected move. 68% of the time closes within it, okay? Um, so right now, as it stands still, bulls have now the short term, um, uh, kind of edge here, right? So what's the word that I'm trying to use? They are in control, right? The bulls are in control based off of this time frame and this five-day moving average, so shorter time frame. All right, let's continue on. I want to look at the VIX really quick. The VIX got crushed. We haven't seen this low of a reading under 20 since I think it was like April, right? I should have brought up that chart, but I didn't. We have multiple gaps above us, and these gaps typically get filled. We got one, two, three, four, five, and I'm not even listing the one. That's the sixth, right? I might be missing something here. But as I know, it's six, and that that other one is up like at the 45 range, okay, which we haven't seen that type of crossover for quite some time. Now, be, be mindful that we do have a little bit of a positive divergence here and a positive divergence even on the shorter time frame. So we'll see here, right, if this can hold under. It feels honestly like we're holding, you know, um, like we're, we're holding a ball underwater right here and you're gonna about to let go and it's gonna fire off to the upside. That's what it feels like at this particular point in time, but um, doesn't necessarily mean that's gonna happen. Uh, more on that here, looking at the VVIX, the volatility of volatility has increased. It was up today. So, you know, and even the skew I think printed higher today. So somebody knows something about hedging here, um, which I find a little bit interesting. On a bullish note, we did get another buy signal too on the CPC. All right, that was on the breakaway gap. Okay, so this is also another reason why you can at least consider playing a breakaway gap is because we broke away. We're also getting a buy signal and that opens up the door for right a potential good risk to reward trade. If you play this to the long side now, um, now you have a breaking out of this area. Yes, we have a 200 day above us. Yes, we have the year to date anchored VWAP. Yes, we have the weekly expected move. All right, um, but you know, the same thing happened when I got this buy signal here. Somebody said this buy signal sucks, right? And it triggered off again and then pow, you know, so if they weren't patient for two days, well, they missed out on this entire move. Now, um, a lot of people have been kind of stating that, oh, you're so bearish, you know, this, this, that. Understand you can be bullish and bearish. It depends on the time frames. Um, I all, like if you're in the Patreon group, which I'll talk about here momentarily once we go into the zones, um, they would, they know, all the Patreons know that the trade ideas that I post, the majority of them are all long setups. And I'll give you a few uh, that, that we just recently, that I recently posted. Um, now, if you do want to do this, if you want to come into this, this, uh, the Patreon community, you got to make sure that you can use Discord, right? I sync dis. You got to sync Discord up to Patreon once you sign up. That's the only way to see all my content that I post. Um, I do swing trade setup ideas. It's nine bucks a month. If you don't like subscriptions, just pay annually. It's a one-time thing. It's ninety dollars for an entire year. It's dirt cheap for the amount of stuff that I put on there, which include the zones, which I'll get into. Which actually, I, I don't list it on here because I'm still I'm still testing it out, and you get to see in real time the notes that I take with the zones, but I also give weekly watch lists. Okay. They get pretty extensive on the watch list where I look for price to tighten up and, you know, contraction leads to expansion. That's what I look for. And then we give expected moves for the sector spiders and some other, you know, big fang stocks, like 30, 40 products there. And then obviously you go to the chat community and the private discord stuff too, as well. Okay. Enough of that. Let's look at the zones. Something interesting that I found today. The upper level of the VIX actually ticked up today despite the price action going completely down. So I found that to be interesting, which tells us that there's now minus 2.13% to the downside to the lower end of the zone. And then there's 21.94% to the upside. So just be um, obviously mindful of that. But then also take a look at like the sectors like XLF. Okay, we broke out there. Um, XLB, XLV. Um, you can look at HYG, 
XLC, IWM. Take a look at the upside now as we're approaching the upper end of the zone to the downside. So it's just showing us that, hey, you know, risk is building to the potential downside. Yes, we're getting the breakout and these levels can change. They're dynamic. They're always changing. But as we've seen in the past, this is like an area where, hey, you can be very mindful of what risk you're taking. I personally like waiting for price action to contract. And then I play the move outside of, um, the consolidation. So we'll see here how this price action tightens up or, you know, if it starts minimizing or, or maximizing the upside by going back to the middle of the range and then decreasing the downside or what actually takes place here. But as of uh, yesterday's, the zones, they were pretty much all in the middle of the range. So it gave us that neutral kind of feeling, which we, I don't, I didn't discuss the zones, but I said it was more neutral than anything. And now it's showing up here that, hey, you know, we're getting a little extended to the upside. Things like IWM, we pointed out, right, the IV percentile. So the IV percentile, on IWM was like 2%, and we have 1.52% upside according to the zones with almost 8% downside, okay? So it's just it's just a very interesting time to, to watch how this unfolds, and that's why I'm using these and why I keep continuing to use it. If you wonder what kind of setups I do, right? So here's like FNA, right? I'll do sideways consolidation, wait, wait for it to move out of the $20 pivot. These ones I did a chart drop, so I didn't write too much there, but it was consolidating sideways. Um, that one played out pretty well. This, it just recently broke out today on some strong volume up 6.4% on the day. So, you know, if anybody were able to take that trade moving out of the pivot, cool, congratulations. They can update risk, do, you know, trade how they want to trade, but it's also breaking out of this prior area resistance too. Um, this one, HAE was a little bit more uh, complicated of a trade, not really complicated, but if you can see here, it was consolidating, prices contracting in a flag, watch for a move over 70. And what I found interesting about this one and why I wanted to share it was we had the move over 70. However, this is like, you know, if you took the move, you would have been potentially a little frightened if you didn't quite know how to do stop losses under the consolidation and so forth or uh, trailing the 20 day moving average. It started going out, started breaking out, but then reversed and was down a little bit more on the day, but still all the key moving averages held up well. And then today, pow to the upside, it reached out from 70 to just over 76 before it started selling off. So it finished up 8.89% on the day, but it was up significantly more than that if they were able to catch that trade. But I don't just post great or good setups, right? I also post ones that don't work like EXEL. This one, you know, price seemed to be having issues holding above 22. So watch for a break of 22 with good volume. And this is the thing about me. I like playing breakouts, but some people like to speculate before they break out. Why well, you got to manage risk. You can see here, we didn't get that 22 breakout um, by any means. And then we started breaking down to the downside. So you would technically get stopped out. Like if you're building in a position, you'd get a stop out if we started breaking down through this contraction type of pattern. And um, yeah, that's those are just some some of the setups that I share with everybody. That's that's all I'm going to talk about with that. Hope today's episode helped out, gave you some insight to what I'm seeing from both the bullish and bearish perspective and gave you some ideas. See you later.